Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson in my beginner piano course level one. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the grand staff or stave, the treble clef, bass clef, and notation, how to read pitches, how to know which note to press down on the piano keyboard. In the previous lesson, we learned about rhythms, the time signature, note values, and that's just one section of music, rhythm. In order to create melodies, we have to play different pitches, and in order to know which pitch or key to play on the piano, we have to use a notation system. And the notation system used in Western music is on the staff or stave in Britain. And this is a system made up of five horizontal lines. Now, as you can see on the screen, between those five lines, we also have some spaces. So starting from the bottom, we call the bottom line, line number one, line number two, three, four, and five. And between line one and line two, we have the first space. Between line two and line three, we have the second space. Between line three and line four, we have the third space. And between line four and line five, we have the fourth space. And it's very important to refer to these spaces and lines as starting from the bottom, because otherwise you might end up playing different keys or pitches on the piano. As we learned in the piano geography lesson, if we go to the left, so down on the keyboard, the pitches are going to get lower and lower in sound. So the further you go away to the left, the lower the pitch sounds, and the further you go to the right, the higher the pitch sounds. Now, when we look at the staff or the stave, we can put notes onto every single line and in every single space. Now I can place notes into any space or onto any line and the higher the note is in the stave, the higher the pitch is. So you have to go to the right on the piano and the lower the note is in the stave. So towards the bottom of the stave, the lower the sound is going to be and you have to go to the left on the piano. So remember, going down in the stave equals going left on the piano, going up in the stave equals going to the right on your piano keyboard. Now, since piano is played usually by two hands and we have two hands so we can use both of them to make music even more beautiful, we need a separate stave for each hand. So the right hand is going to have its own staff and the left hand is going to have its own staff as well. And the two staffs or staves are going to be connected by a little bracket on the left side. And that shows you that you have to play hands together at the same time. Now this can be extremely confusing because you have to read two lines at the same time. That's why we usually start learning pieces first with the right hand, then with the left. And when we're comfortable playing both hands, separately, we start to put them together. Life would be very simple if the reading system would be the same in the right hand and in the left hand as well, but of course it is not, and we have one system for the right hand and one system for the left hand. Now, as I said, until now you can put notes onto any line and any space, but how do we know which line is which key and which space is which key? Now, in order to identify notes in the staff or stave, we need a key of reference. And that reference is going to be called a clef, which is also a key. For the right hand, we use the treble clef, which looks like this. And the treble clef is also called the G clef because you start drawing it from the second line. And on the second line, the treble clef is going to fix the G above middle C. So here is middle C, C, D, E, F, G. And the G right above middle C is going to be on the second line in the treble clef. And once I fix this one note in the treble clef, I know that the G is on the second line. I know that the one underneath is going to be F in the space. The note underneath on the line is going to be E and the note underneath E is going to be D. And then I run out of spaces and lines in the staff, so I have to use something called a ledger line. And as you can see, the middle C needs an extra line because we run out of spaces in the staff and this little short line is called the ledger line and it's just basically an extension of the staff when we need more lines to go down or to go up. 
Now, one very important thing about the ledger lines is that we only make them long enough for one note. And if you, for example, need three ledger lines, you have to use three ledger lines and put the note on the bottom one. You can't miss out the previous two. Also, if you have two C's right next to each other, you wouldn't join the ledger lines into one long line. They would still need to be two separated short ledger lines. Now, these were the five notes, the five basic notes of the right hand, the treble clef. So C, D, E, F, G, starting from the bottom ledger line going up to the second line. Now let's move on to the left hand, which is going to have a different clef. The left hand, since the notes are much lower, cannot use the treble clef because we would end up using way too many ledger lines and it would make it very difficult to read. So for that reason, we use the bass clef, which looks like that. And the bass clef is going to fix F under the middle C on the fourth line from the bottom. So here is middle C. And if we go down five notes, one, two, three, four, five, we get to F. So C, B, A, G, F. And this F is going to be on the fourth line from the bottom in the bass clef. Now you will see later on that the right hand can sometimes use the bass clef and the left hand can use the treble clef or it can use both interchangeably, but that happens in more advanced music. For now, all you need to understand is that the right hand is using the treble clef. Try to memorize those five notes. Where is middle C, where is G? Use those as landmark notes and you can work out the other ones. If you enjoy this lesson, make sure to check out the premium version of this course, which is going to include a free method book, lots of filmed video tutorials for sight reading exercises, technical exercises, performance pieces, and best of all, you're going to get personal feedback from me to make sure your progress is as smooth and efficient as it can get.